snap can bandanas. Yes. Hi, my name is Phil, and my wife Amy and I are building a Chesapeake Lightcraft teardrop camper. Before you install the door hinges and the door, you need to install the door sill, which is really a flange of sorts. It is the thing that the door mates up against and provides a surface for the seal on the door. The door sill comes in three pieces, two of which you assemble with a skinny little puzzle joint before installing in the camper. There was some anxiety in making sure the door sill fit well. If it didn't line up, I wasn't sure the door would close. In the end, I did have to do some sanding and adjusting to make sure the door stiffener cleared the door sill, but now it fits nicely. I sanded and cleaned up the rough edges on the door sills, and I test fitted everything several times. I did a little shaping to get the two pieces of the door sill to mate up properly, and check to be sure the groove that is part of the weather seal on the door sill lined up and it wasn't filled with epoxy. Once the sills were fitted and spaced evenly around the cutout for the door, Amy and I glued the sills on with epoxy thickened with cellophil. Groovy. 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 By the way, if you're planning to install the little hockey puck shaped light fixtures that you can get from CLC, the circular holes in the door sills are a perfect fit. I didn't drill a hole there because I wasn't sure how I would install the lighting, but later when it came to installing the lights it was difficult to drill a hole for the wires so close to the side of the camper. You might want to consider drilling before installing. The wooden hinges are a nice detail, but they can be a bit fiddly. You want to be sure that you've installed them so they line up and pivot without binding, so they need to stick out 90 degrees from the side of the camper for the doors, and straight up and down on the top of the camper for the galley hatch, not 90 degrees to the curved top of the camper. You also want to round off the edges of the hinges a bit because sharp edges sticking out are the sort of things that wear and get chipped. Rounded edges aren't as susceptible to damage. The hinges on the galley hatch go on around the same time as the ones on the doors. The hinges get a layer of fiberglass on each side. As usual, the holes will probably fill with epoxy. They come on a handy little frame from CNC machining like those model airplane kits you had when you were a kid. You can cut them off or leave them on the frame until after you've done the fiberglass like I did. Don't leave them too long before you cut off the excess cloth. Trimming around those small shapes with hardened epoxy and fiberglass cloth is challenging. After glassing on both sides and cutting the hinges out, I drilled out the holes and sanded the hinges round.
When you're putting the hinges on the camper, the square holes need to be cleaned out. There are two tabs on the wooden hinges and they sit inside the little holes in the body of the camper that you have fiberglass and epoxied over. And in some cases, they are also filled in with the thickened epoxy you use to install other parts, such as the door sills. To fit the hinges to the camper, I needed the doors to be in their final position. There is a weather strip that goes between the door and the door sill, and the mating surface of the door sill sits back from the side of the camper. Groovy. To fill that gap temporarily, I wrapped some popsicle sticks in tape and taped that to the sill. I ran out to Woodcraft and bought some face frame clamps and a couple of deep cam clamps because I had an excuse to buy clamps. Other clamps wouldn't reach far enough to clamp the door to the camper. With a little fiddling, I got the doors to sit flush with the side of the camper. My cam clamps are made of wood, so I wrapped them in plastic so I wouldn't permanently glue the doors to the camper with cam clamps. To do the hinges for the galley hatch, I used packing tape and popsicle sticks to hold the hatch in position. I assembled the hinges temporarily so I could test fit them on the camper and make adjustments. Since this means that each hinge is slightly different, I marked each one with where I had fitted it. Left, right, upper, lower, top, and bottom. Once I was satisfied with the fit and positioning, I mixed up some thickened epoxy. The build manual mentions using a blend of thickened epoxy and CA glue, but since they didn't give the magic formula, I just went ahead and used epoxy thickened with cellophyll. I put epoxy on the underside of the hinges and tacked them in position using CA glue. I tried to clean up the white epoxy because I didn't want any to show through the fillets that get added later.
After the epoxy was cured, I took the hinges apart and took the galley hatch off the camper so I could do the little fillets on the hinges. These fillets are made with epoxy thickened with wood flour like the other fillets on the camper. Getting in between the hinges for the galley hatch was challenging, but I did fillets in between them and also the door hinges, which are narrower and nigh impossible to fillet in between. This required a cut down popsicle stick. In the build manual, CLC mentions an old bolt builder trick that makes really smooth fillets. Dip your tightly gloved finger in denatured alcohol and smooth out the fillet, keeping the finger wet as you do this. The trick leaves a nice slick surface. Somewhere buried on my computer is footage of me installing the shelf inside the camper. If I find it, I'll include it in an upcoming video. If you enjoyed this video, or even if you're just a really enthusiastic connoisseur of orange napkins, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell next to the word subscribe so you get notified when I upload another video. Thanks for watching. Ooh, that's pretty.